Hi, in this lecture, we shall see one of the coolest sorting algorithms, Oblivious Merge Sort. In Oblivious Sorting, we want an algorithm that only accesses the input in a restricted fashion. Specifically, we are only going to allow compare exchange operations. A compare exchange operation takes as input two indices, x and y, and does the following thing. It compares the corresponding elements in the array A that we want to sort, and if they are in the wrong order, it swaps them. Such an algorithm is called oblivious. Oblivious algorithms are very useful if you want to sort with a non-programmable piece of hardware. That's because an oblivious algorithm allows you to write down a circuit which performs all the comparisons for every input. Interestingly, oblivious algorithms are also useful for something else. Specifically, they are useful for MP hardness. If you want to give the um, tightest uh, uh, examples of MP hardness, which we shall see later, um, you are going to require an oblivious sorting algorithm. Did we see any oblivious sorting algorithm in this class? Well, let's see what we saw. Bubble sort. Is it oblivious? Gris. Because uh, you lie down once and for all all the compare exchange that you perform and they are the same for uh, every input. What about merge sort? It's not oblivious. If you look at the merge operation, the compare exchange that it performs depend on the, on the input. And I will let you think about quicksort. So how do we have an oblivious sorting algorithm? Well, there is a variant of merge sort, which is called oblivious merge sort, which is uh, uh, just like the merge sort algorithm, except that the merge subroutine is replaced with a different subroutine whose comparison, again, as required, do not depend on the input. Let's see how it works. It's convenient for the exposition to assume that the size of the input, n, is a power of 2, and also to index the elements from 0 to n minus 1. Oblivious merge sort works as follows. Again, if the length of the array is only one, then it's already sorted and we are done. Otherwise, we are going to sort the first half of the array, then the second half of the array, and we're going to merge these two halves. This is exactly the same structure as merge sort. But the difference is that instead of using the merge operation that we saw earlier, we are going to see a fancier version of merge, which is called odd even merge, which is more complicated, is recursive, but has the benefit that the comparisons and the exchanges that, that, that it makes are independent of the input. Here is how odd even merge works. If n is equal to 2, then we are just looking at two, at two elements, so we can just compare exchange those two, and we are done. Otherwise, we're going to do something very fancy. We're going to look at the even subsequence of a, that's a elements 0, 2, 4, and so on, all the way to n minus 2, and we're going to merge those. Okay, We're just going to merge the even elements. Then we are going to separately go. We are going to separately going to merge the odd elements, a, one, three, five, and and so on. And then we are going to do a final pass of compare exchange. We are going to um, compare exchange 
i and i plus 1 for i which is odd, 1, 3, 5. Okay, so we are going to compare exchange 1 and 2, uh, then uh, 3 and 4, and, and so on. And remember that compare exchange x and y compares a of x and the y and swaps them if necessary. And what we claim is that this thing merges correctly under the assumption that the two halves a from 0 to n over 2 minus 1 and a from n over 2 to n minus 1 are already sorted. Okay, here again in the box is the odd even merge operation. Let's try to get some intuition on why this thing works. Something very powerful in the theory of oblivious sorting is the so-called zero-one principle. The zero-one principle says that if you have an algorithm which is oblivious and works, co works correctly on every sequence of zero and one, okay, so we only allow zero and one as elements, then it's going to work correctly on every sequence. This is true because it allows you to restrict attention to only algorithms which have 0 and 1 as input. And again, it's only true when the input is accessed exclusively with compare exchange operations. It wouldn't be true for an arbitrary algorithm. It's only true for oblivious algorithms which only use compare exchange. OK, so for the correctness, we just need to show that odd even merge works correctly when the input consists of zeros and ones only. OK, let us see why odd even merge sort works then. In the box, I have the pseudocode for odd even merge. And in this red matrix, I've written an input. So it's convenient to write the input as a matrix with two columns. So just to be clear, uh, this would be the zero entry in the array. This is the first entry, the second entry, the third entry, the fourth entry, the fifth entry, and so on. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. My input again only has zeros and one, and we want to have it sorted. What does it mean to sort it? It means that if I scan the input in this order, I should encounter all zeros, and then at some point I have to switch to a one, and then I will have only ones. And indeed, this is going to happen at the end where I have first zeros, then at some point I switch to a one, and then I only have ones. Okay? This is my goal. We have to see why odd even merge sort accomplishes this goal. OK, the first thing that we do in odd even merge sort is to sort each half of the input. Once you sort each half, you get this second matrix. And now the fun begins with the odd even merge. Okay, the way in which odd even merge works is that you're going to merge the even column and separately you're going to merge the odd column. Okay, so you call these two recursive calls to odd even merge and you produce this matrix here. The critical observation is that the number of ones in columns C1 and C2 is within where C1 and C2 are these two columns here. The reason for this is what happens in the previous matrix. Here, each half was sorted. So if you look at the two corresponding columns in each half, 
the number of ones will be within one. So then when you put the two halves together, the number of ones must be within two. Now, if they happen to be um, equal, uh, these two number ones, then you're done. If they are off by one, you're also done. The only case in which you may not be done is that they're off by exactly two. In the case you have, a, you have a situation like the one in the picture, and then the last pass of compare exchange will make the sequence sorted. And that's all that we're going to say about the analysis of correctness of odd even merge sort. Let's now switch to the analysis of running time. Let's call the T of n the number of comparisons in uh, odd even merge sort. And this has a recurrence similar to merge sort. So T of n is equal to twice T of n over 2 for the two recursive calls. But then I have to add the time for odd even merge sort, odd even merge, sorry. That's the t prime of n. And t prime of n is itself recursive. And the recursion for t prime of n now is exactly like the one for merge sort. Okay? So t prime of n is equal to twice t prime of n over 2 plus cn. We saw earlier that this resolves to order of n log n. So now if I plug order of n log n in the previous recursion for odd even merge sort, then I get that the total running time for a given merge sort is order of n log square n. We can also make a comment, comment about space. The space will be constant because we only use compare exchange operations, which can be done locally. That's it. We have seen a very cool sorting algorithm called merge sort. It only performs compare exchange operation. It's oblivious. It's important if you want to use sorting with a non-programmable hardware. And it's even interesting and useful in the theory of MP hardness. The, the tightest con connections rely on sorting algorithms which are oblivious like this one.